Hey team, I'm going to try a quick experiment here and I'm going to see how fast I can import a character that I just drew in Procreate on my iPad Pro. And I'm going to see how quickly I can import that guy into After Effects and rig him using rubber hose. So let's get started. I'm importing my drawing right now. And here he is. Once I find it, keep in mind this is real time. Import as a composition retaining the layer sizes. And there he is. I drew this guy this morning. And now let's uh, rig him up. Let's open him up here. So there's all of his layers. His torso, right arm, left arm, left leg, all of that. I'm going to delete the background here so that we're on a clean alpha channel and our character is dead center. We have the mouth, the eyes, the eye background. I'm going to group those together. I'm going to nest those or pre-compose those into a face layer that we will animate his eyes in just a little bit. There's his torso, right arm, right leg, right leg, left leg. Now I'm going to grab the puppet tool. I'm going to come over to this arm here and I'm going to put the shoulder joint the elbow joint and the wrist joint. On the keyboard I'm going to press the letter U and then I'm going to select those three pins and I'm going to hit the third button over here in rubber hose and that's going to turn those magically turn those points into animatable joints and there you go and then I I'm going to change that one arm into tag it all pink so that it's easy to keep a, keep track of which arm is what. I I'd like to make all the different limbs their own color. This makes it easier. And here's the other arm. I'm going to grab the puppet tool again and go try to find his shoulder. There, there it is right there. Find his shoulder and I'm going to pin then the elbow. Trying to get it even with the other side, and then the wrist. Then I'm gonna hit the letter U on the keyboard, open it up, select those three pins, and then hit the third button here again in our Rubber Hose 2 program, or it's not really a program, it's a plugin. But anyway, here we go, back up here. His wrist is, his elbow is going the wrong way for what I want, so I'm gonna switch it to minus 100 on the bend direction and now I'm going to adjust the length of the arm to match the length of the other arm because I adjusted the length of that one as well um, and now I've got it looking pretty good so I'm going to go ahead and label this arm with a different color I went I'm going for peach so got a peach arm and a pink arm. Okay, here we go. Now I'm grabbing the puppet tool pin again. And this time I'm going to go on the leg, on, on the right side, my right side leg. I'm going to click the hip position, the knee position, and the ankle position with the puppet tool here. I turned off the body layer so I could see exactly where his hip, the top of his leg, is at. Alright, and as you can see now I'm just going to change the color of this leg to its own color so we can quickly identify it, so I'll switch it to red. And now I'm, now I'm going to do the other leg, same thing. I'm going to put the pins in the hip, the knee, and the ankle. Select, hit U on the keyboard, then select those, those positions, and then hit the third button on our Rubber Hose 2 plug-in. Switch those to brown, label those to, to, to the color brown. 
And we're just buzzing along here, just having a great time animating this little monster with his pink horn and his yellow eyes and his weird teeth and his sharp little fingers. Okay. So now what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm connecting the shoulder joints to the torso layer, to the body layer, um, the hip joints and the, and the shoulder joints, connecting those to the body. So now when I move the body, his limbs will move with him, as you can see. Now I'm just gonna adjust uh, the bend direction of the left leg, my left, his right leg, uh, so that when I when he goes to into his down crouching position, his knee goes out instead of in. And now let's gonna test it. I'm gonna slide him down a little bit. Yep, there he goes. His knees are going the right way, and. Now we're ready to animate. I think I, it looks like I, I accidentally left a little piece of blue up on his arm there. You know, I made it, I drew him very quickly. So what I'll do, that I, you could easily mask that out or just redraw the arm and re-import it. But in our case, I am going to just move his shoulder in and hide that part of his arm um, after I do some quick keyframing here, uh, moving him in his up and down position and then seeing what that looks like. It looks silly. I like it. I like it. Yeah. He looks like he's antsy. Like maybe he has to go to the bathroom. And he's just waiting. Somebody won't get out of the bathroom and he's really got to get in there. So now I'm going to copy and paste those keyframes all the way to the end to create a loop. Okay, now I'm going to animate the eyes. I'm going to go into the face layer, and I'm going to create a simple loop of his eyes looking up and down, but I'm going to move them in the opposite direction of his body. So I'm going to start in the up position, and then move to the down position. Then every five frames, it'll go the other way, just like just like I did with the, uh, the body, the torso layer. So now I'm going to copy and paste those, and take that all the way to the end so that we create a nice perfect loop and it'll give him a little secondary animation uh, so he's not so he's more alive and vivid and real looking as real as a blue monster with essentially it kind of looks like he has eggs for eyes he's got uh, fried egg eyes sunny side up egg eyes here I go. I'm going to move those shoulders in to hide that little mistake on his on his left arm, my right, while I look at him. And now he's bouncing. He's just, he's like, let me into the bathroom. I got to get into the bathroom. Come on, come on, come on. Or maybe he's really hungry and he's waiting for his new impossible Whopper. What is it? The meatless Whopper. He's waiting for the meatless Whopper. And he just can't wait. He needs to get his hands on it. Um, also, this video is not sponsored by Burger King. I'm just ad-libbing. Okay, now I'm playing him back, just looking for any irregularities or anything strange about him, but he's looking pretty good. There's a, it looks like his, uh, his ending keyframe, he's ending in the wrong position. So I'm gonna just remove that so that it's a perfect loop as he comes around. He slows down a little bit at the end, but that's okay for this. Um, and he's looking good. So, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to composite him into a background. That seems like a pretty fun thing to do and we could do it very quickly. I am going to find a background to put him in. Okay, I like this background. It's a it's a background plate that a friend of mine shot, and it looks like it looks like uh, there's some caterpillars caterpillars on the uh, rocks. So I'm gonna make I'm gonna position our character, our little blue monster, 
into this little scene here. So I'm going to readjust the size of the background player to match because he shot that in 4K and we're only doing a 1920 by 1080 frame. Now I'm going to position the monster into the frame and shrink him down so he can be standing on this rock. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a drop shadow. And this is a very quick way to add a quick drop shadow to give him a, the scene a little bit more uh, life and realism. And basically what I did was I'm going to duplicate our monster layer. And then I'm going to go over to our effects bar and I'm going to grab the drop shadow. And I'm going to apply it to one of the layers. And then I'm going to click shadow only on the drop shadow effect and then I'm going to reposition it and shrink it and distort it so that it looks flat and small. Then I'm going to adjust the softness of that layer so he just can have a little bit of a shadow underneath him. And then once you do that, just kind of find the best place to have that shadow, what looks real, try to look at the light, where is it coming from, and match the other shadows that are in your, in your shot. Trying to see if I can change the color to match something else that looks good. Well, there, there we go. That sort of brownish black looks great. Uh, I'm going to put a little underneath him a little bit more, shrink it down a little bit more, stretch it out just a little bit. And then now I have a little shadow underneath him. He's kind of standing there. Oh, looks like he's getting off, he's jumping off the ground a little bit. I don't want that. It does look kind of cool, but I think I'm going to slide him down just a little bit so his up position, his feet still look like they're grounded. And there he goes. Now he's just bouncing away, bouncing away, waiting for something that we cannot see. Maybe he's waiting for this caterpillar to fall off the rock. Maybe this is just his normal way of being. Maybe he's just uh, always very excited. Anyway, that was a quick tutorial on how to rig a character as quickly as possible using Rubber Hose 2 and After Effects. I did draw the character in Procreate on my iPad Pro and it looks like we're at about 12 minutes and 40 seconds. So 12 minutes and 40 seconds to to animate a character you've already drawn is pretty good. And that's why I like animating using After Effects and Rubber Hose 2. It's just quick, it's easy, there's not a whole lot to get in the way of your creativity. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, this very quick tutorial, and I hope you're having a great day. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, just go ahead and leave them down below, and don't forget to click and subscribe. It helps, and it makes me feel really cool. I also apologize because I do have a cold, and I probably sound like I have a cold, but I hate having a cold and then just laying around doing nothing, so I thought, well, let's animate something. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time, team.